Today, we're at an industrial market here in Shenzhen, China. This is not like the normal electronics markets that I show. This is where the factories come to buy parts to run their factory lines. So I'm here with Kenneth. Uh, you've you've actually made parts yeah. for, or made machines for factories before, so this shouldn't be too foreign to you. No, nope, yeah, this is this is me. And then Philip, who's a software engineer, oh, yeah. and this is going to be totally new to you. Yeah, I don't know. So that. <laughs> let's go inside and check out what they have. This place is awesome. So this place is just a couple floors. It's much smaller than Huachang Bay. It's a lot of the same stuff you would find at Huachang Bay, but a lot more like industrial and mechanical and awesome. Lots of chains. All your chain needs here from big to small. So this is all USB cables, your USB plugs, connectors. It's Saturday, so not everybody's at their booth. Uh, it's a little bit quieter than normal. But this is normally a pretty quiet market. Uh, there's actually a fair number of people here today compared to what I expected. Yeah. All the sizes, as long as you want a bag full. So make sure you don't step on the kids. There's kids in the aisles everywhere. Everybody's just like hanging out with their parents at work. She is cutting ribbon cable with a paper cutter. <laughs> that is ingenious. Very, very cool. Oh, here's one of the booths that you'll like. This is ball screws. Oh. And ball screws are sold like meat on hooks. Because <laughs> you don't want to bang them up. Right, here's, your, here's your linear bearings to go with them. And so this would be like a linear stage that's moving back and forth yeah, in some your, sort of machine. Your platform or your you know, transfer station from one to another. Yep, they're here measuring out the cable using the floor tiles as a ruler. Okay, so do you know what these are here? This is automatic it's tape dispenser. Oh, well, it says on it. Okay, yeah. that's cheating. This holds a, a reel of tape in here, and then it automatically cuts off strips that are the same length, which you can tune over here, uh, length and width, yeah. right? And then it sticks them uh, around this, and it, oh, you it just, just leaves them there, and then you take it off, and then it dispenses a new one, and so it'll have six or eight. So, so you don't have to like fiddle with the tape reel that's each super, time. That's super clever, and it's, yeah. yeah. Whenever you need tape on the line, like that's how it's, you know, a little piece of Kapton or whatever. And they've got all sorts of different sizes and whatnot. Yeah, here's a Kapton dispenser. Um, so you have all your various like soldering iron tips and bags of 10, right? Because you're, you're going to want to buy a whole bunch of the same one. And depending on exactly what you're soldering or working on, you're going to want a different shape or size of soldering iron. And they all, it's the same standard interface on the back, so you can swap them all out in the same heating like the, the pencil, all, all, all take all of the different shapes. We've got all the wheels for all of your factory carts. We're attracting a lot of attention, just walking around with the camera in here. Just curious attention, like no, nobody seems upset, but oh, little conveyor belts. So here we've got pneumatics. Yeah, we've like, got like pressure regulators, oil yeah. separators, actuators, um, the switchable solenoids. Yeah. Right, so you can take your, your PLCs, digital logic comes in and switches those. Yeah. And you can stack those up and yeah. like have a whole bunch of switched lines to then actuate your solenoids in one way, you know, advance and retract. And this is just like a totally interconnected ecosystem where you can plug and play anything you want, mix and match. Yeah, right. Parts from different vendors, it's all standard sizes and shapes and mounting holes and... Yeah. Yeah. And it's, like, and it's really easy to prototype with this stuff too because... Um, you know, it's all threaded inserts, right? So you can put quick just disc. You screw can put, it all together. You, you, well, you can put quick disconnects on oh. it, and you can just use uh, plastic line between them. Oh, that's quite cool. Right. I really want to build something out of pneumatics. I haven't figured out what yet. Uh, if you've got ideas for what machine we should build with pneumatics, leave it in the comments. But uh, yeah, I really want to come and just have an excuse to buy a whole bunch of these. It's uh, sintered bronze. It's a whole bunch of little sintered bronze balls, and so that way, when your solenoid switches back and it vents, it's quieter. Right, because otherwise it gets really loud and you get high pressure and you vent it. Oh, it goes on. Yeah. <laughs> so you can, you can feel a vent coming out, you know, it's venting out of there, so it's kind of like a sponge. Right, but it's real quiet. And these are just little tiny actuators here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, and this is just to kind of get a rhythm into something? Well, it, it's going to be for moving, you know, moving, moving whatever it is, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Advancing the next one, picking something off the line. Yeah, but it's about the. It's not necessarily about rhythm, they're just showing it off here. Yeah, like this right. could be on whatever right. you can schedule down on. Uh, yeah, but it's producing some repetitive motion. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, it's all tinker toy, right? You got your right, so that's that's just an inline switch. So you can turn on and off each part. You can see here you can turn up and down the pressure and then it changes this right. Rhythm. And that change that changes how much force you have on everything downstream of it. That's a pretty cool little demo setup. Oh, 
warning labels. Look at these. These are, See. yeah, these are good. In, in your hand. This is one of my favorite places to look at warning labels. Like, they're really good. Yeah, like, like all the one. really scary ones. Right. And, uh, Electric shock. This looks like death. And some of the translations are pretty good too. But do the pi the pictures are good as well. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, don't launch your finger in a gear. Yeah, no, no, no you, you don't point at it. Right. These are cool. These are like pneumatic pickup, like like uh, suction cups. Yeah. Like here, this would then have a vacuum, right? Ah. And uh, and and it would pick up something on a on a like a pneumatic arm. Yeah. yeah. Right. 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 And then this is the, yeah, yeah. that's the the quick connect for the. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, and they're, they're all spring loaded yeah. so that you don't have to exactly come to it. You can kind of slam it into it. Right, and then get, pick up get, from get there. Get good pressure, yeah. turn on the suction, and then pick it and up. And then lift yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, and there's just bags and bags and bags of replacements here because I imagine they rip over time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those are yeah. one of those things that you know, on, on your periodic maintenance, you'll say like every 90 days we replace all the cups. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Kenneth, you're on a mission to find andons. Oh, yes. Do you want to describe to us what an andon is? So, andons are these glorious stack lights that you see on all industrial equipment that'll typically indicate like the status of that tool like whether you know green if it's operating fine yellow if you need if it needs attention red if something's gone wrong in that part of the production line um, so that way you can like operators can look out across the factory floor and see which tools need help um, but it's all modular and so you can drop on whatever lights you want on these things and then just put in a different length screw whether you want, you know, green, red, yellow, white, blue, um, you can put siren modules on them. So you can kind of build whatever stack of stack lights you want, and they're just, oh, they're beautiful. And so you're you're looking to purchase some, right? How much would these go for in the U.S.? Uh, in the U.S., you're looking at a couple hundred dollars yeah. for these because it's a, it's such a yeah. it's a specialized product that's only used by, you know, yeah. industrial stuff. So yeah, it's yeah. like the you know, volumes yeah. are small and. They're very specialized. I think we can get them for less here, but I think you have to find some you you actually want first. Yeah. And then we'll it's like everyone has their small here. displays, but if we see someone that has like the whole, you're like, waiting for the whole booth. But yeah. It's just it's nothing but booth is, Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll hold it out here. Okay. So we need to talk about vibration pots because they're one of the cooler things that happens at factories. So this right here is a vibration pot, and this is a way that you you take something small out of a bag, you dump it in here. And then with no moving parts, it sorts them all, aligns them all, and feeds them onto a feeder line uh, oh. just through vibration. So it's got a big vib vibrating motor down here, and it shakes the whole thing. So come like and this. then they just gradually work their way up the ramp yeah. until they're sitting in this track here. Come like this uh, they probably end up, they end up sitting. Straddling. They probably end up sitting vertically like that. You see these everywhere. Everywhere there's a small part, a screw, a capacitor, or whatever. There are these, and they're they're all like a little bit custom built. Yeah. Um, because it's gonna totally depend on exactly yeah. what you're trying to pick up. But they're like this totally passive way of doing something that's really hard any other way. Yeah. It's super cool. Uh, so kind of now I start understanding why people always say in the U.S. there's no there's no supply chain for building stuff. Oh, like, all right. I mean, where where are you gonna come? Stuff. <laughs> where are you gonna come look at vibration pods, right? Like it's, yeah. Here. Or any of this stuff for that matter, right? Like where are you going to find any replacement parts for your factory line that day, yeah. right? You're, you're going to have to mail order it and you can't come look at it in person. You can't bring the broken thing to someone and be like, I need one of these. There's, there's a lot to be said for ecosystem, like irrespective of everything else. So these are automatic screw machines. So this is an automatic screw feeder here. And then uh, there's a screwdriver here and uh, it can screw, it can insert screws all on its own. Uh, as long as it knows where to put them, you know, program it in ahead of time. So toggle clamps are super cool. Um, whenever we have like fixtures where we're trying to like build a quick fixture in a factory to put one thing and then hold another thing onto it to somehow assemble them. Um, these are just super jelly bean, they're kind of like vice grips, um, but they're instead any orientation you want. So if you want that nice snap action, hold one thing down onto another, um, you can just kind of build that with these. So they're, they're used a lot in like text, Test fixtures, test, and like, test fixtures, assembly fixtures, kind of anywhere where you want to like you know put something down and hold it. Yeah, um, it's there. It's kind of this is this is the the part that you use to do that. Yeah. And so this is this is one of the test fixtures, like where you would put pogo pins and these similar type clamp handles. So you'd put your circuit board in here, and then this would clamp down and and be all your test points, and then you'd have some automated test that runs once that's all clamped into place and you've got everything touching the contacts. Yeah, super, super common in, in circuit board assembly. So this, this shop is entirely like 
heaters for your chemistry for etching and, and things like that and all your liquid moving and measuring and it's mostly heaters we has got a whole bunch of like pre-made breakout boards yeah all the different like pin pin offsets Right. And just like anything that you might like, oh, I just I don't want to spin a board right now. I just want to like plug something in. Want, want access to any one of the pins on HDMI? Right. right there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Just like pre-made, ready to go. Boom. USB-C breakout board. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pongyo. <laughs> friends, for friends. We're making a video for friends. Like when, you, when you're doing like high-speed prototyping and stuff, yeah, you need to solder it. Um, it's a real standard. It's the, like it's a Manhattan style where you'll pre-cut, you'll slice each island, so each one of these will be a uh, signal. And you can solder the components down onto it. Okay, yeah. sort of like dead bug style, but exactly. Flat. Yeah, so this, this yeah. is this is dead bug, but all of your all of your islands are already pre-cut for it. Okay. Oh, they've got some good perk for it too. Yeah, this stuff's super cheap too. Yeah. All right. Oh, a couple they, quai. Um, how much do you pay for this? Uh, I mean, like, I'm, on, how much would you pay for one of these? Well, on eBay, I can get these for like a dollar, two dollars. Okay. On, all right, that's not too bad. Uh, Radio Shack, you'd pay six, eight, ten, yeah, fifteen right, dollars. Right. I uh, I didn't manage to capture it on camera, but we've been bargaining over uh, over um, per yeah, board. Yeah, we want this color. Yeah, this color. Yeah, this one's prettier. Oh yeah. Let's do let's do that one. Oh, Ooh, do you want black and black? Stack? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Black. Yeah. 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 It's it's much prettier. Yeah. It's much prettier. Yeah. Yeah. So cheap. Like, <laughs> um, so let's do four of the red ones. Okay. Well, those, are, those really are pretty. Yeah. Yeah. So this is beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. So solder for all your solder needs, right. ranging from giant rolls that I've never seen this size in the U.S. before. Oh yeah, this is what probably two or three pounds. All the way to bars here for your solder pots here. So these are just big chunks of, of solder that you would then put in, you put it in here, and that is a molten pot of solder that's hot that you can dip uh, wires into to just tin them. Oh, that is amazing. Non-professionals do not open. <laughs> Oh, these are, they're closed here, but if we see, if we see someone who's selling these again. <laughs> you know what those are for, right? Yeah, they're like for um, closing a pipe or something, like that, right? No, no, they're finger cuts. Yeah, you roll it down over your finger to give you better, like, grip. Oh, I see. Right, like this. So there are, like, finger condoms. Tape for miles. This is Kapton tape, so it's a high temperature tape. Uh, anywhere you're gonna have a lot of heat. Yeah, it's sticky, but it doesn't break down, it doesn't melt. Um, and then just, yeah, run of the mill. Packing tape and masking tape and marking tape, all the tape. This is what I would refer to as rice sacks anyway. Um, often used for shipping, particularly like soft goods. You got something made out of fabric, but I'll get stuff in the mail from Taobao all the time. Like if I order like plastic bins for organization, they'll just come packed in a rice sack like wrapped in tape. Yeah, what else have we got? Um, it is prohibited to bring whoa. kindling. Mind your head. Maintain order. Working time, no visiting. Working time, forbidden to eat snacks. Be careful with too much water. So which one would you want? <laughs> That's the swap. You'll be okay, thank you. Uh, do you want a receipt? No. Yeah, yeah. This is how much? 49. Oh, uh, this is 49. Is that okay? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, Misha, Misha. Yeah. This is how Misha. 49, yeah. yeah. This is how much? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Misha, Misha. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Misha, Misha, Misha. Yeah. Make one see. I kind of picked it up. Yeah, yeah. Which is amazing, yeah. by the way. Oh, I'm going to take your money. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Oh, Misha. No. Yeah. Make one see. She's gonna, she's gonna get you change. Yeah. <laughs> one, yeah. one cent. Misha. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Say, say. Okay. Say, say. <laughs> so that's that's the equivalent of like five or ten cents. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a five. Yeah. And it is, oh, that is awesome. amazing. So are you happy now? Yes. You got your uh, you got your Nothing. warning labels. These are your non-professionals. Do not open. Professionals only. <laughs> All right. We're gonna go check out the third floor and then get some lunch and then go to the other market. Because we've only seen half so far. I forgot, this and floor is thoroughly not interesting. It's for all the PCs that go in your factory. Well, where's the other escalator? 
back down off the lunch. Uh oh, watch out, watch out, watch out. <laughs> Okay, bye-bye. Sit down. Alright, there should be some food shops over here. See if anybody's still serving is the question. It's 3 p.m. I want to take a quick moment out of our factory adventure to thank Brave for sponsoring this video. Brave is a web browser based on Chrome that's focused on preserving your privacy. I've been using it for over a year now as my main browser, and I love it, and I want to tell you why. But first, we need to talk about ads and third-party trackers. They're one of the main ways that data is collected about you as you navigate through the web. So as ads are served to you, as you go to sites that have third-party tracking code on them, they're collecting data about what websites you're going to, what you're doing there, who you are. And so Brave blocks them all by default. It has a built-in ad blocker and it blocks all third-party tracking code. But you might be asking, what happens to content creators like me when everybody starts blocking ads? And the truth is only about half of you see ads on my videos right now. Um, I know that based on the YouTube analytics. And that's pretty low for YouTube. And I think it's because you're so tech savvy and you're already using an ad blocker. And honestly, I'm good with that. But the reality is that I make a big part of my living off of the ads that YouTube shows, as do a lot of other YouTube creators. And when you don't see any ads, I don't get paid. This is where Brave is super cool. They have built a micropayments platform that actually works that's seamless. They have this, this token called uh, a basic attention token or BAT that you buy and you put in your account. And then as you browse the web and watch YouTube and whatever you do, it automatically gets doled out to the people that you're spending time watching or reading. And then we could turn those tokens back into real money and pay for things like housing and food with them. It's great. And it's automatic, so you don't have to think about it. But if you want, you can go in and tweak it and make sure that people that you don't like that you sometimes watch don't get your money. Or you can go in and tip people you really like so that they get more. The Brave browser is a way to protect your privacy in a serious, well-designed way and use an ad blocker and support the creators that you love all at once. So give it a shot. I have been using Brave as my main browser for over a year now, and I love it. And Brave is gonna hook me up with a little bit of cash for every one of you that downloads it and tries it out to put towards making more videos for you guys. Click the link down in the description to try it out. Now back to our adventure. Okay, so we're at Depu, which is the second market. We were at Yivwa this morning. If you wanna check out these markets, you should check out the Dangerous Prototypes blog post about these markets. I'll link it down below. This is bigger, huh? Yeah, it is bigger. So a lot of the same stuff, but I think we'll see some cool stuff here too. Here we go, all the stickers. Hot Cerise. Hot Cerise. Check lubricant regularly. Yep. Caution laser. High risk. High risk. That's pretty good. <laughs> the stickers here are so good. And they're like this really thick vinyl that, that uh, has like some texture to it. Super professional. Mm. So automatic screw feeders here. Oh yeah, so we can see it now yeah. well here. You put the screws in here and then uh, it sort of shakes them around and then they come out oh, yeah. front right yeah. here. It, uh, one by one. Yep. Yeah. So oh, it lifts them up. Yeah. Yep. So it's, it's got like a yep. impeller in the back yep. there that drops into a tray and then it has to get all the way across the... Can uh, you see it from this side? Oh yeah, there we go. There they, yeah, you can see that it drops them here and they go in. Yeah. And, and then they've got like a switch deal up front so that when you remove one it feeds the next one out. This is a good uh, machine shop. We've got lots of faction machines in here. We've got good like vibration pots. So this is an automatic wire stripping machine. Uh, we saw one of these at the UV printer factory, if you haven't seen that video yet. It's a big vibration pot here. It's got all the blades here for, yeah. for wire strippers. Oh, these are crimp machines. So this is for crimping cables. I want one of these at some point. I'm tired of crimping my own cables. But uh, yeah, you put the, the cable head in there and it'll handle it for you. Big reels of uh, crimp up here. So. I am running out of steam. It turns out I only have a capacity for about three hours of markets a day yeah. before I like, my eyes start to glaze over and all the booths start to look alike. 
Let's go upstairs. Something something LED in building, in District D. I don't know. You had me at LED. <laughs> Got all the aluminum, uh, um, my brain is off. Scotty's got no chill right now. The things like that heat go sink. on the heat sinks. Yeah, heat sinks. Heat sinks. Yeah. Heat sinks. Aluminum heat sinks. So yeah. they just extrude these as a big long rod at, with a set profile. So they, it's basically like squirting Play-Doh out of a uh, out of a Play-Doh machine, and um, they get a big long bar, and then they just chop them up. They chop them this way. So this is the profile that gets squirted out of the machine. It's a big long bar, and then just a saw cuts them up. It's actually really really cheap to make these. And that, this booth is demonstrating all of the different profiles that they have, and then you can customize the length uh, so that you don't have to, uh, you don't have to even pay to have a tool made. That is a nice X, X Y stage. So these are pneumatic pinchers here. So they're like graspers for grasping, that are picking something up off the line of all different sizes, all the way from the little tiny ones to like fairly chunky ones. So up another one. Oh, we got these two girls chasing us around. I can't quite catch them on camera. They're elusive. Yep. Bye bye. The kids are like ubiquitous in the markets everywhere, all the time. Oh, yep. Back to laptops and other boringness. Yep. Standard top floor. Back down. I'm running out of steam, but I think we should check out one more building because there is another building to check out. Do you need to check out Andon's? You need to at least ask the price for an uh, Andon. I feel like we've talked about them so much. We did. It's tempting. <laughs> yeah, what if they're like 25 bucks? Um, yeah, I, I, I think there's no good number to find out how much they cost. Yeah. They're either they're just as expensive and... Yeah. Or they're really cheap and I want one. Right. 36. No, so five bucks. Five bucks for, for this Are you one. sure you don't need one now? I, I need one. Okay. Oh, we need a... Yeah, yeah, uh, you go. Yeah. Yeah, just a, just a short one. Yeah. So wait, how much are these in the U.S.? Like two, three hundred dollars. <laughs> maybe, maybe you should get like a few more. No, how, no, no. how ripped off do you feel now? <laughs> Extremely. <laughs> Wishy. Oh, Wishy. Koi. He's she's Chinese. We use we use WeChat. Yeah. All right. I'm gifting you an end on now. Oh, thanks, Gotti. I really appreciate it. I never never cease to be amazed of like stuff that's like multiple hundred dollars in the US that's like, oh, so fancy. Right. And you come here and it's like, I oh, know, it's five bucks. You really don't want to take a few? <laughs> no, I really don't. Well, it gets dangerous. Yeah, I don't want to become an and on importer. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Well, it's, a, it's an art piece. You do something cool with it once, yeah. and then you'll be done with it. Yeah. So at KWF on Twitter, if you want Andons, yep. he's your Andon supplier. Andons, train facts. Uh, Although I mean, the thing is, I I didn't buy it. Scotty is Scotty's the one that bought the no, Andons. No, no, yeah. don't talk to me about yeah. buying Andons. I'm not your Andon supplier. Scotty is no. the go-to place no. for Andons. No, no, no. <laughs> that's not that's not what I said. He didn't he didn't take cash though, so I actually <laughs> couldn't buy it. So. It's true. So for the, for the Andons, the mo so looking at the master car, yeah. the modular stat, the base, the base is $105. <laughs> Each individual light module is between 40 and 155. Oh my and god. The, so just the the modular, the base plus the three lights, this would have been about four or five hundred dollars for what I just bought <laughs> for five, five dollars. Yeah. And someone wonders why there's no production in the U.S. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> those are both related in both directions, right? No. So few people buy them because they're so expensive. And you got it. They're so expensive because so few people buy them. Yep, you got it. I mean, I'm sure the other one that you got from McMaster Car is nicer and more yeah, metal it's, it's and all, stuff. Yeah, all but metal. Like, but also, who cares, yeah. right? Like. Honestly, I should, we probably should have bought some spares. Yeah, just right. Just in case they break. All right, uh, that building there. Universal packing material. Yes. We've got factory uniforms here, clean, clean room outfits, like uh, smocks, smocks and, and shoes and flip flops. And so all, all these rolls of capped on tape make me think of. Uh, so you can get capped on tape in like really pretty wide yeah. rolls. Of, you can get like four inch wide rolls of capped on, but again on a master car, it's like three hundred dollars for a roll. Of oh jeez. Yeah, they don't cost that here. No. Right? Yeah. There's Captain's really cheap here. <laughs> it's What's yeah. Captain is that the heat? That, 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 that caramel looking the brown tape. Brown tape. High voltage, high temperature. Yeah. Oh, I see. There's only so much tape and office supplies we can look at. 
it goes on for miles. I have like maybe three to four hours of markets in me at most per day and then I'm just like wiped out. Too much stimulation, too many blinking lights and shiny things and blah. We might have run out of market buildings. Yeah, I think it's a hospital. It was <laughs> that was the medical waste door. Okay, fair enough. Well, I think that about does it for this time. We're out of market buildings. I'm exhausted. We're gonna head back to the hotel. I hope you enjoyed this adventure. I'm Scotty from Strange Parts. Hit that subscribe button down below and I'll see you again soon.